on the line, I have a very uh, special guest, because special because not only has he been community organized, he's exposed the community organizing at a place that otherwise we would not know that the National Endowment of the Arts uh, has not just been politicized uh, and the average uh, artist in this country uh, that would even be prone towards being involved with the NEA is very liberal, but something a little bit more nefarious is going on here, and it's got the telltale signs of community organizing all over it. We've got on the line here Patrick Corelci. He's a filmmaker, a marketer, and an art community consultant based in Los Angeles. And he came to my attention when I read a piece of his uh, in Reason mag Magazine's online uh, blog site in which he talked about the role of the artist in, in society. And he basically – I could tell, Patrick, you were kind of getting creeped out of the uni uniform pro-government, pro-Obama, um, you know uh, – way that the art community was, you know, um, being. And, and you wrote a, a piece that just said, hey, look, you know, I'm, I'm not saying that it's wrong to be an Obama supporter, but this uniformity uh, is it was creeping you out. Yeah, definitely. It, it was it was not only creeping me out. I also was a little bit fearful that, uh, you know, the one guy that comes out and says anything with the Joker poster uh, you know, he was pretty heavily criticized by, uh, you know, any of the media that was, uh, you know, mainstream media that was covering him. And so my fear was is that, you know, with uh, that kind of of a resistance coming at him and that kind of uh, criticism was going to uh, inhibit others to come out. Well, so that's Patrick, that, that's, the, that's the tactic, is to call a person a racist. They didn't even know who he was. They didn't know whether he was black or not. Yeah. Uh, but they called him a racist, and that's, that's sending a message. It doesn't matter if we've gathered evidence. You're a racist, meaning... The worst thing you can call a person in this country, obviously not murderer because uh, Teddy Kennedy was just given quite the burial. I go, the worst thing you can call a person in this country is to call a person a racist. And it's so un-American to call a person a racist because you have to it, – it, it's your – you're, you're you have to disprove your guilt. Yeah. It, that's the fun and, – and that's what they know, that by sending that message to millions of people who are seeing things in a way that's creeping them out, they recognize it's going to take zero evidence for the other side, which includes the media jumping on and piling on. They're going to call you a racist, and you're going to have to have a Sergeant Crowley airtight case that proves that you taught a racial profiling class at your local police uh, academy in order to extricate yourself from being called that. So it's, a, it's an intimidation uh, tactic. Yeah, it's an intimidation tactic that uh, up until now I think has been working pretty well. I do think the tide is turning on it. I, I think that that word now is losing the, the venom that it used to have. Um, and it, it, that's sad in a, in a certain case because I'm sure there's going to be cases where it is actually true, and and, and you will need proof now. You know, it, it's just one of those kinds of things where I feel like you know someone needed to say something. I said it, which led me to the the National Endowment for the Arts article because I felt once I put it out there to artists and told them to to stand you know to stand up and say something if they did oppose uh, the administration. Um, I felt like I needed to, 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 to speak out about the NEA in the very same sense. I mean, I saw this thing happening. They, they um, had a hand group of, a hand picked group of artists uh, in a conference call. Uh, throughout the conference call, they were stating basically that they were, uh, you know, part of the uh, main, you know, part of the key reason why Obama got elected into office and, and used the Hope poster and a lot of the art that happened uh, during the campaign as, as prime examples of what this group had to do. Uh, or what this group, uh, this, the, their role that they played in, in getting him elected. So, um, you know, I, I felt like I, I had to speak out because of that piece. And I, so I wrote something on Big Hollywood uh, and, I, you know, had a pretty overwhelming response to, to the position that I took in it, which was basically the NEA has no role in uh, telling artists to uh, speak to issues, and especially not health care at a time that is being vehemently debated nationally. It's just not a, It's not what the NEA was created for. It's not why it was brought into existence. It's called the National Endowment for the Arts, not to use the arts. And I, you know, you see this kind of thing happening. You see this kind of, 
you know, organizing and 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 uh, use of of uh, government infrastructure and and the mechanisms of government to 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 get a message out there and to get and, and to uh, create an environment that's amenable to to various policies. And it's just not the role that the National Endowment of the Arts should have been taking. Well, you you went into that conference call and you reported at Big Hollywood about what you heard in that conference call and that it, it made you fearful because you were recognizing that the NEA was actively pursuing propagandists to push the Obama health care reform movement. And, and once you did that, uh, a, a few news organizations picked it up for the obvious reasons. Today you're going to be on uh, the Glenn Beck television show on Fox News to talk more about this. But as I've talked about in the in, in, in the last segment about Brandon Darby, a guy who came from the left, uh, who, who acted as a whistleblower against a bomb threat on the Republican National Convention, you're acting very much in the same whistleblower capacity. You're not a typical right winger. You've long associated yourself with the left. You just started to uh, started to recognize that these tactics were being done, and they're just not uh, they're not on the up and up. So when you wrote this piece at Big Hollywood, how did the person at the NEA, the head of the NEA, is it the head of the NEA? No, he's the uh, co- director of communications. Right, the director of communications who you basically outed for creating this politicized conference call to dictate everybody to start creating pro-Obama health care art uh, through the aegis of the, uh, the NEA. How did he react to your reporting on that conference call, the na- and the nature of that conference call. Well, you know, it's it, I've seen various. It's it's progressed. You know, the Washington Times contacted him, and he basically said that he didn't uh, that the NEA didn't have anything to do with sending out the invites. He said he uh, directed the Washington Times person to the Corporation for National and Community Service as being the people that sent out the invite. Um, In short, he lied. Uh, yeah, I got the invite directly from him. So, uh, and you po- that you have just this this story comes in two parts right now. The second part is um, they didn't want to demonize you and call you a liar. They just denied what you were saying and thought that well, ABC is not going to pick it up. NBC and the New York Times aren't going to pick it up, and let's just hope that it just fa- goes away. That, that it just goes away. But what did you do yesterday? Uh, and, and, and tell us about uh, why you're going on Glenn Beck today and what type of evidence you've put out there. Well, I put the, um, you know, in, in the in the piece yesterday, I actually showed the invite. It, it came directly from the National Endowment from the Arts. Uh, they sent out another invite, which basically told you to join the White House and the National Endowment for the Arts. So, uh, you know, today uh, on Glenn Beck's show, we're going to be revealing a little bit more that I think definitively shows that they had a, they played a, a major role in originating and initiating the meeting. Um, I mean, I, they're, they're obviously trying to distance themselves from uh, being the initiators for the meeting. What does that say? That says that they felt like there could have been something questionable about being um, the initiators. My argument is is that just being involved with a meeting such as this and inviting um, a hand-picked group uh, a group that you potentially fund. I mean, that's what the National Endowments for the Arts does. Is they give grants to arts projects. So if you have people that you potentially fund on the phone and they're a hand-picked group that helped you, uh, you know, get the Obama elected and you're telling them to speak to health care, what kind of messages do you think they're going to be putting out there? So that's what we're going to be talking about on Glenn Beck today. And, you know, I, I, it's, it's, it's stated pretty early on in that conference call that um, – the the or the originator excuse me the the uh, mediator of the conference call says straight out that he was uh, uh, asked by the National Endowment for the Arts and the White House to put this group together. So I don't think that it could be ignored any longer, uh, you know, or explained away or kind of ambiguously answered. Um, it, it's pretty. Um, uh, you know, it's pretty blatant, and I think that they need to, you know, I think they have some explaining to do. You know, I mean, I, I really feel like they, they need to come out and say, okay, if this is something that they were into and they initiated, why? And let's speak to that, because that's not what the National Endowment for the Arts was created to do. Racist. <laughs> you know what? It, it's going to be – I met you yesterday. I saw you, and, and uh, just as it's easy to kind of peg somebody like me and, and, and what archetype I fit in, when I saw you, I said, wow, we finally have one of those guys uh, coming to our side. You look like your typical 
artsy, cool looking cat, you know, and 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 you've you you have the pedigree and you even have the relationship uh, with 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 Shepard Ferry, who created the hope. Uh, the hope poster in what you're doing there's almost no benefit by uh, showing common cause with the political right in this com- country uh, with an art community that leans so heavily to the left and behaves punitively towards though those who have right-wing things so as a whistleblower as it were you're putting yourself in harm's way what is your motivation to put yourself out there like this knowing that there's a possibility that tomorrow you may wake up being called a racist by uh, Rahm Emanuel's minions. You know, I, uh, I have a two-year-old daughter, and um, I, I, I need to uh, set an example for her, and I need to um, you know, be the kind of, of father that, that uh, you know, she uh, will look up to. And uh, ultimately, um, I think history will say that, uh, you know, what I did, and I think the art community will feel the same way. They might be able, uh, certain aspects or certain factions of it might be upset with me for, for stating such a thing. But I'll tell you one thing. No one's come out and said anything yet. None of that group has come out and said anything uh, because they know that setting up a machine like this is not what we should be doing with a government agency. I mean, history is riddled with ex- examples of how bad something like this can go, of how bad the art community coming together to speak with the government uh, can turn out. And so uh, I think uh, ultimately history will, will uh, you know, vindicate you know, coming out like this. And I, you know, I really don't see it as, as whistleblowing. I mean, there's a, a point in time in, in this country where I think if you spoke out on something like this, you were considered a, you know, a patriotic. You know, and, and, I, and I do think that, uh, you know, if they were to sit back and think about this and think if, if the opposition to their positions were to get a hold of something like this, how would they feel about it? I mean, if Bush did something like this, there would be no question that this would be on every uh, radio and, and television station that there is out there. If there was a conference call that the NEA was being used to create war propaganda, uh, there would have been uh, impeachment hearings, 100 uh, percent. John Conyers would have done everything he could. There's no doubt the double standard is so great that the word double standard doesn't uh, even even fit this uh, this debate. Uh, we're going to bring you back, Patrick, because there's more to the story, uh, and, and I want to tie you into, uh, you know, David Mamet, to me, was a perfect example of, of what you're doing. This is a guy who could not have greater credibility within the left, uh, and he moved over to the right, and he's been able to survive. And I think that the message to anyone that's out there listening that thinks that you're, they're not going to have protection if they come out and speak against this stuff because maybe they have exist in the middle ground or were a little bit left, and they're starting to get creeped out by this encroaching community organizing that's uh, going into federal government with your taxpayer money, and it's starting to look like a lot of countries that uh, – whose fates didn't work out so well, uh, you know, uh, now is the time to come in because if, if, if we don't stand up for it, uh, what Patrick is standing up for right now, we may not have those uh, First Amendment rights, uh, you know, uh, in, in, come the next two or three election cycles. This is Andrew Breitbart. You're listening to The Dennis Miller Show. 